Good morning. I will say something that I've been waiting to say for a very long time. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking how long it would take for me to get through this. It's already happened. Yes, this is a new red letter for the first back in our sanctuary. And certainly welcome to all of those who are with us on the street. My name is Gordon Rich, and I'll be your service leader this morning. It's wonderful to have you with us. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, religious, multi generational community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free thinking, spiritual questing individuals, joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity, pursue the common good, and work for justice. We believe in the compassion for the individual part. The warmth of the community and the search for meaning in our lives. As we begin our time together, I would ask those of you in the sanctuary to make sure that you supply the any electronic devices that you may have with you. And for those of you on Zoom, I ask that you remain with you your service. May we be reminded here of our highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gifts of love and service to the altar. Of humanity. May we know once again that we are not isolated beings, but are connected to the mystery and the miracle of the universe, to this community, and to each other. This morning, I share with you another of the new indigenous names that have been given to the Edmonton's 12 redrawn municipal wards. The names were chosen by a panel of 17 indigenous women. The Committee of Indigenous Matriarchs. For the month of September, we acknowledge the Galakio Ward, which is in the Millwoods area in southeast Edmonton. It is a Mohawk ward meeting a tall, beautiful forest. This ward also acknowledges the Mitchell First Nation Band. The band was settled in the Laxagan period, where a treaty was signed in 1855. The band was involuntarily franchised in 1958, and nearly all members of the initial first band lost their Indian status. In 1985, amendments were made to the Indian Act, restoring the status to 750 Mitchell band members, but the members continued to fight for status land recognition. Sean Neil Baron writes, we gathered together as a community of seekers who honor the inter interdependence of life, who respect the dignity of all, and who honor the land we walk humbly upon. We are blessed with the space and opportunity to strive to live out our common principles, to bring justice, equality, and compassion into our deep lives, to resist all that threatens the earth and the people, and to live out our dream of a world community of peace, liberty, and justice for all. Let these thoughts carry us forth as we journey and worship together. Bless it. In returning to our church home, we bring our own individual energies back into our sanctuary. Let us also welcome the energies of the four directions. As you are willing and able here in the sanctuary and at home, I would ask that you rise in body and spirit as we welcome the four directions. Let us begin to face the east. Spirit of the east, spirit of air, of morning and spring time, be with us as the sun rises in times of beginning, nights of planting. Inspire us with a fresh breath of courage as we go forth into new adventures. 
and let's turn to the south. <laughs> spirit of the south, the spirit of fire, of new times and summer. Be with us through the heat of the day. Help us to be ever growing. Warm us with the strength and energy of the work that awaits us. Please turn left, face the east. Left, right. <laughs> spirit of the west, spirit of water, of evening in the bottom. Be with us as the sun sets and help us to enjoy the rich parts. Flow through us with a cooling. Heal quietness and bring us peace. And we turn to the north. Spirit of the north, spirit of earth, of nighttime, be with us in the darkness, in the times of gestation. Ground us in the wisdom of the changing seasons as we celebrate the spiraling journey of our lives. Thank you. For the last two many months, our Dallas has been lit virtually. We get to light it this morning. And so while we were planning the service, we were thinking two things would we ask to light our chalice. The first Sunday of us wanting to be back, the first Sunday of us being back in our sanctuary. And I wondered. Who would I ask to read the words to light our chalice? So to light our chalice, we've actually asked our Lord President Mike and to read the open art and lighting chalice words. We have asked our new minister, Reverend Rosemary Morrison. We light this chalice for all who are here and all who are not. For all who have ever walked through our doors. For those who may yet find this spiritual home. And for those who yet can't even imagine. For each of us and for all of us, may this flame burn warm and bright. Thank you, Bowling. Our opening words are by Dory J. Summers, and they'll be read this morning by our reports. A House for Our Babies by Dory J. Summers. We, all of us, build houses for our dreams. The masonry of lumber, glass, and tiles are solid forms wherein we see our hopes, sheltering protection for our growth. This house shall be a dwelling place for courage, for integrity, for love, and gender, nourished by a family that speaks of we and means all in kind. These walls shall represent the privacy and dignity of individuals. The open doors are welcome to all people, all ages, and all generations. The windows shall keep the light of inquiry, illuminating from outside of this end. May all words spoken here, born of love and energy, rekindle in the hearts of those who dream this house. To apply the tools and pay the price to actualize the dream. May dreaming never cease for those who think. We know the world to be a troubled place. But 
but dare to struggle with imperfectness for that fresh hope that can gain. Let memories and forms and inheritance a quilted patchwork stitch the tapestry of kindness, of daring for the good, of sunny moments, jokes, and smiles, and as we know, lots of tears. This is a precious place, as is every home that shelters those who love and strive and share. Its blessing is in lives that meet within as we meet now, in living, learning, caring, in being sheltered as we are today and in the future. Thank you, Audrey. May nothing evil cross this door, and may your fortune never find on these windows. <laughs> our first hymn back into our sanctuary is God of Eden for one. As you are willing and able, I invite you in the sanctuary to rise and join the song. For those of you on Zoom, you'll find our words uh, coming up on the 12. Let us join in singing hymn number one, may nothing evil. Cross this. <laughs> Our community is entirely self-governing and self-supporting. One of the privileges of our free church tradition is to provide all of the financial support for our many ministries from among ourselves. Generosity, therefore, is one of the spiritual values we recognize as central to our personal and institutional well-being. In addition to supporting this church community, we also make a monthly commitment beyond our Half of the unidentified cash that we receive is given to an outside organization, some local, some national, some international. For the month of September, we are sharing our abundance with Camp Firefly. Camp Firefly is a fun, educational, social, and personal leadership retreat for queer, trans, youth, ages 14 to 24. Campers explore their identity, build resilience, enhance self-esteem and develop leadership skills that will personally affect, impact their lives, homes, schools, and communities. Workshops, mental health support, art programming, and community building are just some of the examples of what participants can expect. There are offering plates at both sides in the sanctuary. We will not be passing around the collection plate this morning. I invite you to make a 
donation generously to Camp Firefly as you exit our service today. For those of you on Zoom, I encourage you to go to the Camp Firefly website for your contribution. That will I thank you in advance for your generosity and your support. With our times, our talents, and our money, we support the work of the community and our Unitarian University traditions. Please remain seated as we sing together from your embassy. Let's have a recap. We have brought our energy back into our sanctuary. We have welcomed four directions to be back in our sanctuary. We have once again lit our chalice, a beacon of love, a beacon of hope, a beacon of warmth, not only to our community, but to the greater community. We bless this space. So now, I have a question for you. Is this the right place for you to be? Our sermon today is entitled Five Reasons You Should Not Be the Good Parent. How's that for the great sermon? It was first delivered by Reverend Daniel, Reverend Dr. Daniel Cantor of the Unitarian Church of Dallas, Texas, back in 2014. Cantor is still the minister at this congregation. As you will hear in his talk, he calls himself a Jewish, Buddhist, Unitarian, ex-farmer, teacher, turned minister. He writes, here are the five reasons you should not be a Unitarian. One, if you want to believe anything you want. I was talking to my daughter and my cousin who asked me what our church was all about. And I said, well, we're a church that believes that Jesus was a man and God is a mystery and salvation is acting on, on principles. Which my daughter said, what? I thought we could believe anything we want. I don't want to be a part of that church. It's not true that we can believe anything we want. There are a lot of things we do not believe in. We do not believe in limiting people because of their race, gender, ability, or disability. We don't believe in unfairness toward anyone based on their choices, who they love, or what they do. We don't believe in destroying the environment. We don't believe that justice and poverty are just ill-fated accidents that we don't have any accountability to. There are limits to the freedom be correct here, but they don't usually belong to the category of theology. Here there is variation on that topic, like in nature. There just isn't one answer. The only beliefs we don't want you to have in this church are the ones that guide you in ways that are destructive, violent, abusive, or create more evil than good. That includes thinking you have or want all the answers because you don't even have the questions. Thinking you have all the answers is not the way it is about here. That includes thinking about the notion of God, that yours is better than anybody else's, or that anyone's lack of a notion of God is better than anyone else's. We left open the question of God knowing that to try to put God in the box is a perilous activity. That is why God of many names opens doors, rather than closes them. Number two, you shouldn't be a Unitarian if you want to be only with people like yourself. If you don't like hobnobbing with the rabble, conservative, a lesbian, 
someone elderly, child, a Jewish, Buddhist, Unitarian, ex farmer, teacher, church minister, then I'll she go. This church values diversity like nobody's business. I know that depending on who you are and what your perspective might be, you might look around and say, these people are all alike. But if you dig in, you will find that that is not the case. We are not a church of tolerance. We are radically, genuinely, and wholeheartedly embracing of difference. That doesn't mean we tolerate bad behavior, though. The respectful treatment of each other is the key. It means we try to create a world. I'm sorry, try to create the change we want to create in the world, as Gavin said. We have a lot of work to do on that, but we keep trying. So if you want to be with people only like you, this may not be the place for you. If you are a Christian who doesn't think atheists should be here, or if you're an atheist who doesn't think fill in the blank should be here, it's not going to go well. When I look around, I see Christians, I see atheists, I see agnostics, I see people with earth-centered spirituality, I see all kinds of people. Above all, I see people seeking spiritual nourishment in a community of faith. And that's me. Number three. You shouldn't be a Unitarian if you have thin skin. <laughs> I know it's hard for folks to come out as Unitarian. A minister I knew used to joke that it's harder to come out as a Unitarian in Dallas than it is to come out as gay or lesbian. <laughs> we are a paradigm shifting. We are asking paradigm shifting questions about religious life, especially in the paradigms of family or friends. If there is only one way to see just about everything in the world, we miss the richness of life. The problem for you to come here is that you will be judged on the standard paradigm that thinks there is only one way to be religious or that we are a cult or that we have no religion at all. Those thoughts are formulated without knowing anything about who we are. They're based on the paradigm that says, no religion can be so open. You need thick skin to be a paradigm shifter. You also need thick skin because your minister will not always have the same views or opinions as you. Religious people have many complaints about their minister's opinions because they assume conformity with their own opinions. A difference of opinion, seeing more than one way, shifting paradigms is how we learn and deepen our lives. It's the part of the richness of being here. Four, and I'm borrowing this from a colleague, who said to be part of our church, you have to know how to sin. Reverend Lawson said, this is very important, not everyone knows how to do it. We don't want people here who never do wicked things. We don't want people here who are holier than thee or thou. We don't want people who have made it in the Salvation Department and are just waiting around getting kicked out. <laughs> Because people with too much heaven in them are hell to live with, he says. <laughs> I say that Unitarians have always promoted that you are inherently good. And there are limitations, namely being alive. You are going to sin. You are going to be wrong. You are going to make mistakes but it's not your true nature. We are here to help you get in touch more often 
with that true nature, that true nature of being good, the whole layer of now should not apply. But wrestling honestly with your demons, feelings lost, feelings despairing, feeling troubled, feeling off the rails in your life, now we can help. We may not solve troubles with easy answers, but we will walk with you. And that's the important part. If you have made it in the salvation department, I'm not sure that this is the place for you. Lastly, you shouldn't be a Unitarian if you don't want to be more generous, more compassionate, to serve others. That may be three things, but to me it's one. Because if you come here, we expect that your spirit is deepened in important ways. That you begin to suffer with others. That you begin to serve or sense that others' problems are not just theirs. That you too have a responsibility to hold the world in your hand, in your heart. And that that makes you a more generous person. Not just in how you give your money, but how you approach life in meeting those that you know and those who don't know. That you give people benefit of the doubt before you judge them. That you hold others in esteem. That you know that when you meet someone, that they are a sacred being and that you are not your sacred. That all of that leads to a life of service. And it doesn't mean putting your job and becoming a social worker, it means finding ways to give back. You go to the food bank, swing a hammer, or slap some paint around the house. Arch in the private way, or give blood. To be generous of spirit, and then to be of service is to take justice seriously. That justice doesn't happen when we nod in that direction. You shouldn't be a Unitarian if you don't want to become more generous, more compassionate, or to serve others. We honor our Unitarians every time we extend a hand, knowing that God is too big to fit into a box, that all of us need places to be affirmed and challenged and held, that all of us are sacred beings brought to life. We know who we are. We hope if you're interested for you to too, or at least have some questions. Questions are good. So are you. And I think we are pretty good at being a solid, meaningful, engaged, religious, and spiritual community. You can go all night. This is the place for you. May it be so. What's it? Our next hymn, Yes, I've chosen another favorite of ours that we've been sung together for a long time. Number 123, Spirit of Life. For those of you here in the sanctuary, I invite you to remain seated. And those on Zoom, let's join together and sing in number 121. <laughs> Thank you. 
each Sunday we take some time during our service to acknowledge the joys, the sorrows, the connections, the celebrations, the concerns that not only affect our own personal lives, but the lives of those within our local and global community. For those of you on Zoom, there's a chat button if you want to type in a thought to have shared if you'd like to have a thought not part of our recording service. Please begin by using the video microphone. For those of you here in our sanctuary, Kansas this morning, Ask to be brought up, socially distance, down on. I do have some tables here, and one at a time, and if I come forward, I do can. And then there is a little jump in line, ask to be steamed to your candle, in a little black bag that's up in line. Place your candle. That's good. For those of you in the sanctuary, thank you, Mike, as well. Thank you. 
I see that there have been several comments on the Zoom. If I may, I'm really delighted to have a panel for all who are with us virtually. Both of us here today. As we prepare for the time of quiet meditation, these words by Maureen Kilgore. Here in space, we are gathered, all by no sense of urgency, or the longing for community, all to be together on this day. Here in space, we are gathered. All to hold ourselves accountable to our values, to remind ourselves of those hopes and dreams, possibilities, which sometimes in rough and tumble work, it can be hard to hold on to. Here in this space, we are gathered. All to do our part in weaving a web of human. Here in this space, some of us have come to, to those who are dealing with issues of health. We pray, we wish for courage, for healing. May we pause and hold gentle all the concerns they never be. We gather this day. And in the complexities of our community, it is right that in this space some come with joy us. May we rejoice together, remembering the wisdom that says joys are multiplied when shared. We remember gratitude for warmth, thankfulness for sunshine, appreciation for the simple tastes of whatever food arrives in bodies let us choose. Here, in this space, we are called to weave the web of human community. May we pause in our silence. May we lift, lift up at least one blessing, one joy, no matter how small, has touched our life this week. May our shared silence be a blessing on our hearts, on this community. And may this blessing extend outward to grace the wider world. Let us enter the silence together.
Trusting that this is the right place for you. It's important for us to take a moment to confirm who we are as Unitarian Christians. And so I invite Susan to. Unitarian Universalist congregations and promote seven principles, which we hold as strong values and moral guides. We live out these principles within a living tradition of wisdom and spirituality, drawn from sources as diverse as science, poetry, scripture, and personal experience. As Reverend Barbara Wells Temple explains, the principles are not dogma or doctrine, but rather a guide for those of us who choose to join and participate in the Unitarian Universalist religious communities. First principle, the inherent worth and dignity of every person. Reverend Dr. Rebecca F. Parker writes, Reverence 
and respect for human nature is at the core of Unitarian Universalist faith. We believe that all the dimensions of our being carry the potential to do good. We celebrate the gifts of being human, our intelligence and capacity for observation and reason, our senses of ability to appreciate beauty, our creativity, our feelings and emotions. We can use our gifts to offer love, to work for justice, to heal injury, to create pleasure for ourselves and others. Second principle, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. Reverend Emily Gage writes, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations points us towards something beyond inherent it points us to a larger community. It reminds us that treating people as human beings is not simply something we do one on one, but something that has systemic implications and can inform our entire cultural way of living. Compassion is something that we can easily act on individually. We can demonstrate openness, give people respect, and treat people with kindness on our own. But we need one another to achieve equity and justice. Third principle, acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations. Reverend Brown Hardy's writes, spiritual growth isn't about a vertical ascent to heaven, but about growth in every dimension at once. It's spirituality in 3D. We need souls that can take in the world in all its complexity and diversity, yet still maintain our integrity. And we need souls that can love and be in relationship with all of this complexity. Fourth principle, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. Reverend Paige Getty writes, as responsible religious seekers, we recognize that we are privileged to be free, to have resources to pursue life beyond the survival, to continually search for truth and meaning, to exist beyond bonds, dogma, and oppression, and to wrestle freely with truth and meaning as they evolve. This privilege calls us not to be isolated and self centered, believing that our single perspective trumps all others. Rather, to be humble, to be open to the great mysteries of truth and meaning that life offers. Fifth principle, the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large. Reverend Teresa Parsa writes, in our religious lives, the democratic process requires trust in the development of each individual conscience. A belief that such development is possible for each of us, as well as commitment to cultivate our own conscience. Sixth principle the goal of world community is peace, liberty, and justice for all. Reverend Sean Parker Dennis writes The sixth principle seems extravagant in its hopefulness and in trouble in its prospects. Can we continue to say we want world community, peace, liberty, and justice for all? The world is full of genocide, abuse, terror, war. What have we got ourselves into? As naive or impossible as this sixth principle may seem, I'm not willing to give up on it. In the face of our culture's apathy and fear, I want to imagine help create a powerful vision of peace by peaceful means and to live as if we believe that a world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all is possible. There is no guarantee that we will succeed, but I can assure you that we will improve ourselves and improve the world by trying. Seventh principle, respect for the interdependence web of all existence of which we are part. 
Reverend Forrest Hill Morris, our second principle of respect for the interdependent web of our existence is a glorious statement. Yet we make a profound mistake when we limit it to merely a platform of environment and people. Our seventh principle may be our Unitarian Universalist way of coming to fully embrace something greater than ourselves. The interdependent web, expressed as the spirit of life, ground of all being, the oneness of all existence, the community for fire, the process of life, the creative force, even God, can help us develop that social understanding of ourselves that we and our culture so desperately need. It is a source of meaning to which we can dedicate our lives. Thank you, Susan. So now that we know who we are, we need to be here. Need to be here. Yes, that's what I said. And that we understand who we are as Unitarians. That makes us all architects of fate. Our theme for the month of September is endless possibilities. Yes, let's all be architects and explore these possibilities. Our closing theme is that the two meetings, all our architects, those at home, our Zoom, and might join us for the as we sing here in the sanctuary with me in the maturity tonight. <laughs> words are by Margaret Weiss. The church is not a place. It is a people. The church is not only a steeple above the tree line, streets and cars. Rather, it is a people proclaiming to the world that we are here for the work of healing and of justice. The church is not walls built stone upon stone held together by mortar, but rather person, linked with person, linked with person, ages and genders and abilities, community built on the foundation of reason, faith, and love. The church is not just a set of doors open on Sunday morning, but the commitment day after day and moment after moment of our Experiences all fear, all love, and hope in our resilient hearts, gathering however we can to say to the world, Welcome, come in, lay down your heart, pick up hope. For the church is us, each and every one of us. Together, we give hope to this world that sorely needs it. 
I would ask Mike and Rosemary, Reverend Rosemary, to come forward to extinguish our chance. Words by Maddie Safantis. We extinguish this flame, but keep its light in our heart with its message of love and justice, taking it outside these walls to the world that we live in until we are together. Thank you. For those of you at home, for those of us in the sanctuary, our closing song is here to play. Now I'm trying to figure out how we in the sanctuary do this. Normally we all join. We can't do that. Just know that on, online. We're not doing it. What I would suggest is that you see how many people while you're singing. How many people do they come And let everyone know here and at home that we are all carrying this flame inside of us together until we are together. Let's rise and sing. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. We have some announcements. The first thing that I need to do is express some very, very hearty, well deserved thanks to many people who have made this service possible. And I'm going to begin by thanking Jennifer Hinchcliffe. Jennifer has once again taken on the role of volunteer coordinator. So I would encourage you all of here, all of you on Zoom, give her a call before she contacts you. <laughs> there are many roles that need to be filled lovingly within our community for the Sunday services and beyond. I uh, encourage you to. Uh, support as much as as best as you can so thank you Jen, for our greeters of course um uh, susan Batan, ruth on sound thank you ruth um audrey brooks reverend morrison uh, mike uh, karen on piano so nice to hear that piano be played again um i also need to to express my thanks to the um oh, tech team andrew i am thank you for keeping our, our Zoom going. Uh, also for the reopening team, of which I was a part, who made this happen within the, with us getting back in the building, Mike Keast, Andrew, and Reverend Rosemary. Um, just a little heads up, Reverend Rosemary gets her first service with us next year. Oh, next year. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I can, I, can actually, I can actually see next week. How was that for, for, for the course of heaven? Oh my God. Yes, next week, next week, next Sunday. Reverend Rosemary is here. So we're back here at Senate. I'm a minister in the house. And we are so looking forward to that. So thank you all so very much. Make sure you're checking your Friday uh, email newsletters. There's much information coming out up there. Uh, for those of you on chat, please stay in line and understand that. Um, uh, there will be opportunity for you to continue to have a little bit of a chat online. For you, those of you here at the sanctuary, please uh, feel free to uh, stay and have a little chat. Uh, please exit through these two exits only and make your donation to Campfire Fund as well. Uh, you've had invoices with you. Please leave them on your chairs uh, before you leave. Are there any other announcements here in the sanctuary at this time? Nope, I'm thinking no. For you at home, go we'll have yourself some coffee. Um, not having coffee here, of course, at this time. Um, thank you so much, all of you, for being with us this morning. Let us go forth with joy. <laughs> <laughs>